Hey there guys. Okay, this is a um, this is a update for the GPS build. Now, when I first tried to do this using the F4 Evo, I ran into problems. Um, but since then, we've had a firmware update, and I decided to try it the GPS module on the genuine um, Series Two Pro F4 Evo board. And I got it working. Now, the only issue that I had with having that like that was that the receiver that I have on there is only four channels. And with those four channels, I use um, transmit receive for obviously the controller and telemetry using the crossfire protocol. That leaves me two more channels and on those two channels, I used one channel for arming and disarming the propellers. So I can plug the battery in and there's no way the propellers are going to spin until I click a switch, which is really good. Now, you could use that as your failsafe too, in some respects, and I tend to do that. If I do uh, drop out of the sky, I just flick the switch off and just cut the power to the motors. And then you've got another switch, and that is the one I actually set up for failsafe. Failsafe by a switch, not failsafe by the receiver, because there's a failsafe system within the receiver as well. But I also like the idea of having a failsafe on a switch. So, um, that doesn't just cut the propellers. What that does is give me the option to set up within the software. I'll show you. It's not set up here yet. I've not actually done it. I'm hoping you can see this. But you get a failsafe option, and with that, you can have drop, you can have land. And for this one, I will be setting the file safe as probably a land and having a manual switch in the modes for return to home. But of course, when you've only got four channels, I've only got the option of just setting up the file safe. And with that, I'd have it set to land, I'd set my speed, and that would be a little bit of a trial and error on configuration. So I can get it so it's hovering, and then as it just starts lowering itself down, I'll take note of the throttle position and then set in that value to here so then if I did flick the fail safe rather than just drop out the sky like if I cut motors it would actually bring itself down nicely like use Hobson guys now um, and do a landing and that's what you want okay so but with this now I've got it set up on this free sky receiver it won't do as long a distance it's 2.4 gigs it won't have the um, the advanced penetration of the lower frequency but it's the X4RSB I think I've said that right which, is, which means it's a full range um, receiver one and a half kilometers greater than one and a half kilometers if you take in the, uh, the symbolism on the advertising I because this is the night one I've set up LEDs and I'll just show you quickly, you just bear with me, I've just pulled the receiver, the transmitter, sorry, up here, transceiver I should say, so I can flick on, on. the LEDs, I can flick on the LEDs, we've got LEDs on the front, and the reason why I've got these here is not because I want them for flight LEDs as such, Light all I want them for is, um, orientation if, you, if you're flying in the dark before you take off and just warm up into the air I think if you're flying anything it's good just to have a little go around in front of you just to make sure everything seems right everything's working as it should and if you're flying in the dark it's very hard to have an orientation um, which I experienced not that long ago when I took it out when it was really really dark so switching being able to switch the little LEDs on and off so I can see I can see the orientation I can see that everything's okay and then as I start going up and away I can turn the LEDs off by the transmitter which is why they're set up on there so if anybody was wondering okay so how have I actually got this set up where everything works if you take a little if, I'll show you the different components first so there you can see the GPS module flashing away blue it's got GPS lock we're going to have some uh, GPS there, and I'll show you that in a minute. 
this part here is let me just get some I can poke with this part here is the receiver we're bound so we've got a little green light there we're bound to the transmitter um, here is where I've got the receiver set up ignore this white wire just for a second uh, it's down here that I've got a receiver, I've got the power set up, I've got the uh, receive side set up, and I've got the smart port set up for the telemetry. This is on, if I get it right, this is um, UART 2. Because you can only have one thing happening on a UART at a time, I then use the uh, telemetry setting by, on the back of this board, soldering a bridge to make what would be UART 5 transmit into what well it is actually UART 5 uh, transmit for the telemetry but it's set for telemetry this wire here and I've checked all the functionality this comes from my transmitter for the video this is the VTX aerial as you can see and that goes onto UART 3 on smart audio onto a transmit pin and then we've got these two twisted pair here that come through and this is sat on UART1 and this is for the on-screen display which is sat within this little bit of um, insulation tape it's a very small board, the Minim RSD now I did at one stage I was using this uh, FPV Furious, Furious FPV um, on-screen display board and that would fit on the back of the camera that's all good, but the problem is these boards are sort of like designed for the particular camera. So if I wanted to swap the camera out, I then can't fit this to the board. I could just maybe wrap it in uh, tape, but it's the minimum OSD board is half the size of this. And to be honest with you, it's just more convenient for me at this time to use that. So I took that out and reset up uh, another minimum OSD, the same as what I've got on my other quad on the owl is what I call it and then the other wires that are coming off oh we got a power wire here coming in for the LEDs and then we've got a signal wire for the LEDs and the ground wire for the LEDs which go around to the front of the LEDs here because of the way everything's sat I don't want to start turning the quad around and doing but that's, I just showed you the LEDs are on and then those wires run back again because then they're going to connect into this array of LEDs and with the buzzer it's not a very good buzzer on this it's very quiet really to be sh to, to be fair you may have heard it when I was connecting and heard it beeping it's not very noisy at all but again for night flight I don't see that as being too much of a problem for my lost um, my lost quad alarm That's all I'm going to get from it. So that's not very loud at all. In actual fact, the ESCs on here are a lot louder um, than that buzzer. And they will go off as well. So if the quad does get down and I've still got battery power, the, uh, the ESCs after 10 minutes will start chiming themselves and buzzing out a, um, a downed model alarm or inactivity alarm, however you want to look at it. But it still will work for there. But because this is going to be the GPS system, um, I will also have GPS coordinates on the on-screen display, which is all good. Uh, because I've now built this into this, I, know be honest, I wonder if I do get the GPS uh, on here. I don't think I do because I switched pretty much everything off. So there you can see. I've just turned the screen on, but I've got a power up now. To actually get that to work, just a little quick check, make sure these antennas um, are not close to each other because the antennas on this, this is a, it's a receiver, it's considered a receiver, but because it transmits telemetry, it's actually a transceiver. So let me just, and no, I don't, I haven't got any GPS coordinates or anything, so I'll have to undo that little um, on-screen display and reset that up for GPS. I did try, I thought I could set it up um, for GPS 
there's three settings, three screens you can have with it, but it's quite complicated, and I really couldn't figure out how to switch between the screens correctly uh, when I was playing around with it last night. So I ended up, because I, I, I just thought I was going to leave the GPS on either. But today, um, my plans for this morning sort of changed. So I thought, hey, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to reset this one up, because this was supposed to be the GPS model. And the other one that I've been using just to sort of get, in, um, not practice racing around, but it's playing around. That was supposed to be just like the playing around one. So, so I decided to put the GPS module on here. So I don't want to buy a GPS module for everything. They're quite expensive. They're £25, £26. So I will take that apart in a little tiny bit uh, after just you know, uh, making this bit of a video and reset that up for GPS and show you that. So, that's it. I've got Smart Audio, which means I can change all my settings for the VTX and so much more. There's a lot of settings. I can change GPS settings. I can change my PIDs. I can change my um, my rates. So the sensitivities, you know, roll, pitch and everything, I can turn them up and down. Because uh, this thing, what I noticed the other day when I set it up on the other one, on the OWL quad, and I just had a little test hover in this room with me, um, was that it was very sluggish, meaning that I'm used to things being very sensitive. I don't know if any of you guys out there play Xbox or any of the um, console games, but when you first get it, you know, your, your settings for sensitivity on your pad, your thumbsticks, are like around about 20%. And that's what this is like. It's around about 20%. So... Uh, where it goes up to 180 for your sensitivity, it's set like around about 20. So you can imagine, I'm used to something that's set sort of at least halfway of that, maybe a little bit more. And uh, I got into it, oh my god, this is this is actually a bag of poo. But it was once I started reading the documentation, I realised that those settings were quite low, and I can go into the CLI, the command line interface, and change those. I can also do it from my transmitter through the on-screen display settings. So that's brilliant. And that's absolutely brilliant. And I do, you know, I, I, do, I do love this thing. So I shall sort out now the on-screen display and I'll add that little bit to the video before I put it up.